it going, YouTube fellows and everyone else? I am back with a uh, new series of comic reviews. Uh, this is what I picked up last week, and this is a new episode of my weekly comic reviews. And this week, I uh, picked up X-Men number one, uh, uh, again. Uh, let's see, The Avengers uh, 16. This is part of that uh, Blood Hunt uh, epic. Uh, Transformers 10 and Daredevil uh, number 11. Uh, let's get started and I'm gonna lead with the comic I was most excited for. Uh, it was this number one X-Men and this is from Jed McKay and uh, who's the artist on this one? Uh, Ryan Stegman and who oh boy uh, this is really good. I am very excited. Uh, uh, okay quick. Uh, the story picks up uh, Cyclops has started his team in Alaska and they've gone to a small town. Um, Beast is hosting a little visit uh, by the town's uh, chief of police and uh, let's see Paula Robbins excuse me and uh, she's come in and they, she is discussing things with Beast and by the way this is real Beast not dark Beast or fake Beast or parallel universe evil Beast this is Beast Beast and uh, it's kind of nice to see him again, by the way. Meanwhile, the team's on a mission uh, because they've gotten a, uh, like, uh, this uh, unidentified group of mutants. Wolverine went to investigate. He was captured. And so they go to check out the mutants as well as, you know, save Wolverine as well. Uh, and Cyclops takes us a uh, new team in there. We get to see how they're working together. Uh, while at the same time, we're getting a conversation between Beast and Robins. And... But both are just as interesting because, uh, yeah, we got the cool action scene where uh, what we thought were, like, leftovers from Orcus apparently are mutants, and they were all late uh, developing mutants, and they all became mutants uh, activated in their adulthood at the same time. Uh, and they're, that's very unusual. That usually doesn't happen. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, we're getting this nice long conversation between uh, Beast, Robbins, and Magneto shows up, uh, who of course always changes the conversation uh, tone when he just shows up. But uh, there was something ex really ex uh, interesting about uh, the town is um, the fact it was a factory town, and, and like all factory towns, it, it developed uh, you know around one particular factory uh, being you know the thing that really brings in the money and jobs for everybody and it got shut down and it got taken over by the X-Men so now people are a little bit resentful and you're like oh that's too bad and they used to build Sentinels that was the big factory town it wasn't like GM <laughs> it was Sentinels the thing that kills them uh, and they've now taken it over uh, so gee really feel bad about it uh, but uh, Cyclops is trying to make peace uh, with them, and matter of fact, uh, <laughs> there is one thing that was left over from the big uh, Orcus War, uh, this gigantic ass uh, sentinel that was left over, and they could take it down any time, but Cyclops decided to leave it up as a reminder for now, um, I guess until he's done being mad. Oh, but, so. This is really good. Jed McKay, I'm, I'm a big fan of his work. I'm a big fan of his work on uh, Moon Knight specifically, but I've been more and more gravitating to a lot of his work. I love the way he paces uh, action uh, and really kind of like just suppose with like really dramatic scenes, uh, really nice stuff. And he does not disappoint really out of the gate great here with this issue. And I like the dynamic of uh, Cyclops' new team. Um, the art's really great by uh, Stegman. And I, I kind of dig the setting a little bit more than I thought, because, like, oh, they're going to Alaska? Ugh, okay, boring. Well, no, it's not boring, of course. It's the X-Men. Of course it's not going to be boring. And, of course, we get uh, Cyclo uh, not Cyclops, but Beast back, and it's kind of nice really knowing it's really Beast. Uh, so that's kind of nice. So also, uh, they've changed, like, the framing and the logos during the Kr Krakoa era. You know, they had their own logos as well as, you know, the, uh, you know, credits page and intro page and fill-in page. That's all different. Hey, look, it looks like old school, uh, you know, Marvel stuff, including like the uh, letters page. And where is it? Where is it? And this, this stuff. Oh my God, there's a checklist. I can't tell you, Marvel used to have a checklist uh, like 
geez, from the 60s through the 80s, maybe to the 90s, of these cool little checklists where you could just go, oh, this is the books that are coming out this month. And it was in this big yellow uh, uh, square right here. And it's back. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for me, that's just really exciting. For old school fans, I think uh, you're going to get to kind of a little bit of a, uh, excitement from seeing this. I really like this. I think this is a fantastic start. Uh, I can't wait to get to uh, the other X-Men issues. Uh, I was a little worried that they might be a little bit dropping uh, the ball after the Krokoa era, but uh, this kind of puts me in a fairly confident space. So five out of five Ram chips, very good for a start. And uh, let's see, speaking of uh, Jed McKay, man, I'm really digging his stuff. Uh, also, uh, C.V. Uh, Villa is doing the art, and this is Avengers 16. This is another chapter in the uh, the Blood Hunt uh, event. I am reading Blood Hunt, so you know I am aware of what's going on. Uh, this is picking up from a, uh, a section of the Avengers. The regular Avengers are going off fighting the main direct uh, problem, uh, where Captain America is taking a, a team featuring like Hawkeye. Uh, let's see, Hawkeye, Quicksilver, Hazmat, and Hercules uh, to take on. Uh, Baron Blood and his vampire Nazis. Oh, uh, previous issue I is a great line where Captain America uh, says, "Like I have met vampires that uh, are good people and are just stuck in terrible situations and are doing the best they can, and I've never met a good Nazi." Great, great line. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, we get this big kind of action sequence here it, of uh, them taken out. I gotta say, Hawkeye is really great. Uh, Quicksilver has a really devious scene versus the vampires where he, uh, he tells, he, he, he lets it loose what uh, Baron Blood really feels about his minions uh, and he uses that against them. Uh, great sequence and uh, not bad. It ends on a, this really kind of cool cliffhanger. I don't know if we're going to really get a resolution of this, but it really does mean to suggest that Hawk, Hawkeye takes out uh, Baron Blood at the end. A uh, really cool, fast-paced uh, piece of work here. Uh, really nice. It's always amusing to me when Hawkeye shows up, and I love Clint, and I love Kate. They're both great characters, but, I mean, I gotta admit, Kate's a better Hawkeye than Hawkeye. Like, she's so hilariously overprepared, and she's kind of cocky about it and kind of a smartass about it, but she can back it up Why being that good. It's kind of amazing. Uh, I really like that one. It really... That single issue doesn't really stand up too much on its own, uh, but like if you're you know kind of reading the adventures and the blood hunt stuff, uh, really good. Uh, that whole little uh, uh, tie-in, the two-part, three-part uh, tie-in, uh, I'm gonna give that uh, a strong yeah five out of five. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, also, one last Marvel book for the week is Daredevil number eleven, and we're picking up. This is uh, Saladin Ahmad, uh, Saladin Ahmed. Uh, Aaron uh, Cutter, and uh, let's see, essentially, uh, Daredevil got his butt kicked, <laughs> uh, Electra picks him up, uh, they recuperate, Electra has some Asgardian healing juice or something that she got, uh, and is able to help him because he looked pretty bad, he fell down an elevator shaft, so he should be freaking dead, but uh, he got better. So, uh, there's a nice bit of dialogue about uh, Matt Murdock talking about what it's like for a blind person to wake up uh, from unconsciousness uh, and it's interesting because I never considered, considered what that would be like. Uh, that's a nice bit of writing. Um, meanwhile I got this uh, plot going on where uh, a kid from the orphanage that Matt's working now as a priest finds out he's Daredevil and kind of blames Daredevil for his dead's death and runs into Bullseye and is taken cap captured by him. Uh, meanwhile, Daredevil goes off to face Kingpin, who is basically kind of in cahoots with this devil named Greed. And uh, let me get this big kind of uh, reveal uh, that I guess they're, I don't know if we're going to go all the way with Possessed, but it does feel like he's kind of possessed by this Greed monster. So uh, not bad, pretty decent. Uh, I've never been the biggest fan of Daredevil going all the way into uh, religious stuff. But uh, it's uh, pretty decent. I'm going to give this uh, probably uh, three out of five Ram chips. Not bad. Uh, and lastly, I'm going to be talking about uh, Transformers! Transformers! All right. Issue 10. And this is by the usual gang of Daniel Warren, Johnson, George Corona. And uh, we get uh, Beachcomber's backstory. And Beachcomber saves Spike at the end of last issue. And we get to understand that 
the big uh, spaceship arc that crashed into the Earth millions of years ago. He got thrown out during the fight and landed on the moon and had no way of getting off. So he kind of waited. And he waited and waited. And it looks like he had to wait till the Apollo mission came and he hitched a ride back. Um, I hope he shut down. I hope he didn't spend the whole time uh, spindle, like spindle from the Steven Universe movie, just sitting there waiting. Uh, I feel like that would waste a lot of energy, so he probably maybe shut down or something like that. But anyway, uh, we're getting a lot of like kind of the Autobots regrouping. Uh, Alita One and Optimus Prime are kind of like uh, kind of getting back to the other Autobots and kind of figuring out what to do. Meanwhile, Shockwave and Soundwave are having a meeting about uh, what uh, Shockwave's mission idea is to kind of like bring Cybertron to Earth and process animals. You know, and kind of like, you know, figure out, you know, turn them into energy and, you know, ugh, it's, it's horrifying. Um, there's a scene where uh, he comes into the room and he sees Soundwave, you know, trying to repair uh, Ravage. And he goes, why don't you just like melt them down and we'll just like rebuild a, build a new one. And Soundwave does not care for that. And you know what? Uh, I think Shockwave just made a potential enemy out of Soundwave. Uh, you don't fuck with Soundwave's pets uh, and his crew. Like, I don't know, he's just always been protective of his crew, Laserbeak and Ravage, uh, you know, Ratbat, Rumble, uh, Frenzy. Like, you don't mess with his people. And uh, that seems like a bad idea on his part. Uh, so anyway, he, he and uh, Thundercracker are kind of having a conversation. Like, you know, they're kind of not loving Shockwave's uh, methods. And it's interesting to get this kind of like death from uh, Decepticons where they're not all evil about all the time and all the way up to 10 on the evilness and uh, they seem to have like degrees of like maybe that's a little maybe torturing prisoners is a little bit much <laughs> so, uh, so anyway it ends with a big uh, reveal that uh, we are teleporting or throwing uh, through a portal uh, Cybertron were bringing it to Earth uh, pretty much like uh, they did in the old G1 animated series they did that as a plot line which, if you did that, that would pretty much destroy Earth, I think, even if they made contact in the orbit. It doesn't even have to hit Earth. Uh, but we'll see what goes on here with the science. Uh, excellent stuff. I love Warren's uh, run on Transformers. Holy crap, this is great stuff. Transformers fans, you really need to put, pick this book up. Five out of five. Uh, excellent work. So, hey, that's what I thought about uh, last week's comics. And uh, hopefully, uh, in a few days, we'll talk about this week's comics. Uh, let me know in the comments below, are you reading these comics? What should you think? Uh, is there anything you're reading that maybe you think I should read? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to hear it. Uh, I'm always looking for new stuff right now, and I'm, I'm kind of wanting to shake things up. So uh, be happy to hear it from not just, you know, Marvel DC, but, you know, anything, independence. And I want to do talk about more indie stuff uh, here and uh, elsewhere. So, hey, uh, leave me a comment below. You can click the notification bell to get all things Manos. And uh, I have several different uh, locations you can hit me on social media, like, uh, I don't know, like threads and Facebook and Instagram and uh, Tumblr and stuff. And I'm starting a uh, sub stack. I'll be doing an official video talking about that very soon. Uh, you can catch me there and you can see all my work. But hey, uh, that's it for now. Until next time, push the button.